What's up everybody, welcome to the video. We're going road course racing for the first time in the 2024 season as we head out to Texas, the Lone Star State, tackle Coda, Circuit of the Americas for the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix on Sunday, March 24th, around 3.30 p.m. Eastern. And I know road course racing is not everybody's cup of tea, especially if you like Bristol last week. This is definitely gonna be a completely different change of pace. But I do like road courses for fantasy purposes, like as boring as they can be. They have done me well in the past, so I cannot complain too much. But anyway, if this happens to be your first time here, what's up? My name is Chris Pinnell. I break down NASCAR DFS each and every single week on this channel. Videos on Saturdays, live streams on Sundays, planning for usually around 12.30 or 1.00 p.m. Eastern, so be there, be square, always a good time. Also, gotta give a shout out to No Sleep last week for being the closest one to Denny Hamlin's fantasy output. And for this week, again, we're gonna run it right back. Who is going to score the most fantasy points and how many? Leave it down below and the winner will get a cash prize. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you have a like down below, subscribe to the channel for brand new, and let's dive right into it. All right, so let's talk some strategy here at Coda. And one of the reasons why I say that, yes, road courses are boring, but I tend to like them, is because it's usually the same guys popping up almost every single time. You can look at average finish, average running position, driver rating. You just kind of see the same guys popping right up, even green flag speed metrics. And in no specific order here, this, this, the guys that we typically see near the front of the field, it's going to be Tyler Reddick, Chase Elliott, even though he has been on a bit of a winless streak at road courses. He's still been running exceptionally well. William Byron, AJ Allmendinger, Chris Buescher, Michael McDowell, Ty Gibbs, who I would not be surprised if he wins a race very soon. Plus his teammate Chris Rebell has been awesome. And you have Shane Van Gisbergen, SVG, who's also going to be in the cup field this week. So we pretty much just kind of see those guys mesh together. It feels like every single road course race. So you're kind of just picking and choosing from them. Obviously, there's other guys you have to fit in your lineups based off the salary restrictions. And there's certainly other guys that can contend for the win, but I'm just talking based off of averages from what we've seen in the next gen car so far. And they do record this portion before practice and qualifying and do the rest after. So maybe we'll see some surprises, but I'd be kind of shocked if we don't see the typical guys up front in practice and probably near the front in qualifying unless there happens to be any mishaps. And as far as roster construction is concerned, you don't really have to worry too much about dominator points at a road course. Sure, you'll want the main lap leader and the winner. I mean, that kind of correlated there, which I wouldn't be shocked if it is. But you're mainly just picking drivers that you think have high finishing position potential. Because place differential isn't something that's super important at a road course. Like, yes, no, there's a lack of laps, so the dominator points aren't like a focal point. But it'll be pretty driver dependent. Like, if we have a really bad road course driver that's starting in the 30s, just because he's got place differential doesn't really mean that we need to play him by any means, especially if we have a guy that's really good at road courses that starts seventh. I think that'll probably end up being a bit more appealing. Now, place differential might have an easier path to hitting this year because they did bring back the stage caution, so we'll get the field jumbled back together, at least the guaranteed two times. And we'll also have drivers that are going to be points racing, so they'll stay out and not pit before the stage end, and then they'll drop back to the back after they end up hitting, and guys can get shuffled around. So. Place differential might be a bit easier this time around. I'm not saying to completely fade it. It's going to be very driver dependent, in my opinion. But for the most part, my focal point this week when I'm building lineups is high finishing position potential. And finally, moving on to the driver by driver breakdown. I do have to mention one thing first, and that is, of course, if you want to join the community over on Patreon, I'd love to have you. Link is down below in the description or the pinned comment for that. I do appreciate everyone that has signed up so far. But you do get access into my entire NASCAR model, which is color coded nice and neat. So it's very easy to follow projections for both sites optimizer, ownership projections, cheat sheets, my article going over cash games, tournaments, the best that I'm looking at this weekend. Also the entire betting model and much, much more. And you get access to the Discord that is popping 24 seven. And baseball is starting very soon, opening day on Thursday, March 28th. And I will be covering that each and every single day till the end of the season. So if that is something you're interested in, I got you covered there. And as you will find out, my prices are very fair compared to everybody else in the industry. So if you want to check it out, you know where to find it. Link will be found down below. And as you all probably know by now, or maybe not, I am a partner with Stochastic and they did launch their NASCAR Sims tool for this season. So if you want to come check it out, you can use the link down below in the description. Tell them I sent you and you get access into the entire contest generator with their pre-contest simulator to help you find which drivers have the best return on investment or which lineups are looking the best to stack up in tournaments. You can upload my own projections or use their own or use your own custom ones if you so choose to do so as it is fully customizable. So if you want to check it out, you know where to find it. All right, so practice and qualifying just now ended. Not too many surprises. A lot of the names you'd expect to qualify near the front did qualify near the front. We do have some bigger names in the back, so that'll be fun to talk about. Let's get into it here. And these are not the most up-to-date odds. These are pre-practice and qualifying, and I imagine they will move around quite a bit. Now we'll let you guys know which bets I do have before practice and qualifying, and then we'll have to see what happens afterwards once new lines open up. But we have the two big dogs up top, Tyler Reddick, 
and Chase Elliott, two of the best road course races in the series. Chase Elliott dominated in the Gen 6 car, and Tyler Reddick has dominated in the Gen 7 car. Now, Chase Elliott does not have the wins in the Gen 7 car, but he has still been very good. So the data that I'm looking at this week, outside of what happened on the track on Saturday, we can look at the 2023 road course data. I did exclude Chicago because that was a bit of a mess. And then we have an 11 race sample size of the next gen road courses in general. And as you can see, Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick, pretty much one and two in most categories, although Tyler Reddick has been the dominant winner. Three wins in 11 races, five top fives, nine top tens. And as you can see, even the dominator category, Chase Elliott is right there with him. So even though the wins have not been there for Chase Elliott like they were in Gen 6, he has still been extremely good at road courses. Although for this race, it looks like Tyler Reddick has a bit more speed. Chase Elliott did struggle in practice, but did put down a pretty good qualifying lap, and he's still good at road courses, I think, to suck in this race. But yeah, at that price point, you're really going to need a top five, top three contention from Chase Elliott. So it's going to be kind of hard to get there when we can get similar plays. I think out of some of these eight and nine K drivers. So while he's going to be in the player pool, I just feel like I'm not going to get to him as much as I may want to. And I do have a bet on him to win at nine to one. I don't really feel that great about it, but I do like my other bets, which we'll get into in a little bit. So if I had to pick between Tyler Reddick and Chase Elliott, I think Reddick has better race winning speed in my opinion so I'd lean towards him even though you're not getting as much place differential but the thing is with these two like I said I feel like we have very similar plays in the 9k and 8k range and it's not like the dominator points are super important here and they did add stages back so it's going to be a bit more randomness so I don't think these are absolute must plays but they will project well Cal Larson he's starting in 15 10,200 bucks looks like he's got a really good car his overall lap times looked pretty good over on Fandle, I love him over there, at least just eyeballing it. He's only 10500 bucks. He's starting in 15th, and I think he can be a top five contender here. It's going to be tough because there's so many guys that looked very strong on Saturday, so not everybody can be a top five contender, but Kyle Larson should be knocking on the door for it. Plus, at road courses, he has been pretty strong. Stronger, I would say, in the Gen 6, but if we're looking at 11 race sample size here, while well, the average finish is not that great of 17th, he's been running a little bit better, still has a win, two top fives, four top 10s, and this card looks pretty good. So I think Larson is in play, but more so on fan, though. I really like that price point over there. Christopher Bell at 10,000 bucks. I do have a bet on him to win at 12 to 1. We're pretty good about it for where he qualified inside the top five. He's been one of the best drivers at road courses in the next gen era. Looking at his overall numbers, three top fives, six top tens. And if you're looking at practice, was fifth in the one lap and fifth in the five lap. Larson was also second in the five lap and ninth in the one lap. So both these guys look pretty strong. Christopher Bell should be a race winning contender, but probably only going to be able to get to him in tournaments. And I don't want to say that exactly yet for all these guys because I have to look at my projections and ownership. But I feel like as of right now, Kyle Larson might just be the safest play based off of qualifying here. And then Chris Rivell looks like a pretty strong tournament play. Would not be surprised if he could get up front at some point and maybe lead some laps, but that's not going to be too important with the lack of laps that we have at road courses and the lack of dominator points that coincide with that. Getting into the 9K range, Martin Truex Jr., very cheap over on Fandle, only $8,200. So I think he's probably a better target over there. 15th in the one lap in practice, 9th in the five lap. I feel like he's always best suited for Sonoma, where he tends to just crush that. But if we look at the five race sample size last year at road courses, excluding Chicago, which he was running pretty well there, but I believe him, Bell, and Reddick ended up screwing up at the end, and they were just dominant early on in that race. But had a win at Sonoma, three top tens, and some overall pretty good numbers. So I don't think Truex should be left off your boards, but he's not going to be a super high priority for me. But over on Fandle, pretty easy to sneak in at that price point. I mean, he's three, four thousand dollars cheaper than some of these guys that are priced right around him on DraftKings. So definitely a value over there. William Byron, ninety-seven hundred bucks on DK. He's starting in the pole, which can be a bit scary because you kind of have to be perfect in these road course races on the pole to be in the optimal but just because there's not that many laps to lead and you can't really get a nice dominator cushion like you could at bristol if you start in the pool and unfortunately that's not what brian blaney did last week but dominate ton of the race and even finish right around 10th like ty gibbs it gives you a really nice cushion even though he started further back so that's not the best example but i did bet on william byron earlier in the week at 12 to 1 feel amazing about that him and ty gibbs like look like the two best cars in the field so wouldn't be surprised if that's uh going to be the intention for the win him and ty gibbs but I do think he's a solid play here. You get about a thousand dollar discount off of Tyler Reddick. And if he could lead half this race or a decent chunk of it, at least it's a little bit of a cushion to work with. And a road course is last year. Like this should be no surprise that William Byron looked good in practice and looked good in qualifying because he had a 7.2 average finish, which was the best of all drivers last year. Had to win three top fives, the best driver rating. And he was also first in practice. So it's really hard not to like William Byron here in any format. SVG, I wish he was a little bit cheaper. Probably not going to get to a ton of him. He's starting in 12th. He'll be a top 10 contender. He's great at road races. We know that. He won the Chicago race, which kind of got a bit chaotic at the end. He avoided the parking lot. So maybe that doesn't happen. Maybe he doesn't win. But either way, we know he's going to be strong 
But the problem is at that price point, there's other very similar plays in this price range. And there's some other really good guys to get to in the AK range. So he is not a priority by any means. But I mean, as far as just getting some exposure to him, that's fine. Kyle Bush starting in 16th. I feel like I might have more exposure to Kyle Bush here. He's just a little bit cheaper. He starts four spots further back. And he was also very good at the road courses last year. Sixth in the one lap in practice, 12th in the five lap. He had three top five finishes at them last year. And if you're looking at 11 race sample size, some of these numbers look pretty bad, but he had a very bad track record at the Rovals, but still four top fives. So at this being Coda and not a Roval race, I feel like we can have some confidence in Kyle Bush here. So starting in 16th, like him on FanDuel a lot at that price point, 9,500 bucks. Like I don't see any reason to have a ton of SVG on FanDuel when I can get Kyle Bush who starts further back and should have very similar finishing position upside. I get him at a $3,000 discount. And the same can be said for Rosh Tastain. He's not going to have that PD upside like Kyle Bush does. But he's great at Coda. And he's 3 for 3 on finishing in the top 5 at Coda. And has a win when he played bumper cars with Alex Bowman and AJ Allmendinger. So he's in that tournament pool as far as being a race winning contender. But with a lack of PD upside, it's probably going to be hard to get to a ton of him. Because I can play Kyle Bush, starts 10 spots further back. And even SVG starts 6 spots further back. So tournament pool, but not a guy that I jam into Linus by any means. But on Fando, looks a little bit more appealing. Uh, getting to the AK range, we have AJ Allmendinger, 8,800 bucks. He's starting in 14th. Any single time we had a road course, AJ Allmendinger has to be in your tournament pool. Starting in 14th, should be able to race his way up. I know he said he had some uh, things he didn't like about what he did in practice and qualifying, but he can make it up during the race. And if we're looking at his numbers last year, the road courses, five race sample size, one of the best driver ratings, had a win, two top fives, three top tens, and always a guy that's going to get some of those fast laps here. So, Got to have some interest in the Dinger here. I think he's. A fringe cash game play, depending on how your roster construction looks. Ty Gibbs, 8700 bucks. He's starting in second. Him and William Byron look like the best cars this weekend, so you got to get exposure to both. And I am not sure when Ty Gibbs is going to get appropriately priced, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be anytime soon because DraftKings has him married in the AK range. His AK last week ends up getting 100 fantasy points. He was great the week before that. And we are getting a Joe Gibbs car below 9K, which you can't use... But I've been saying the previous weeks where I'm getting the cheapest Joe Gibbs car at a major discount, which I do think he's at a discount, but we have Denny Hamlin cheaper than him this week based off of road courses with their pricing because it can get a little bit weird. But second one lap in practice, one in the five lap. And at some point, Ty Gibbs is going to win a race. And I've been saying it all week to myself, at least, that I would not be surprised if it happens this time around. He is great at road courses, but really good at them last year. One of the best average finish marks. Top five, top 10 contender. And it looks like he might be able to put it all together this week. It's just a matter of doing it in the actual race. He's been good during the races, but it always seems like there happens to be like some mishap that allows him to not win the race and somebody else gets to it. Like last week, he was great, but at the end, best tire managers got there with Denny Hillman and Martin Truex Jr. But Ty Gibbs, you want to play him in cash games? I am fine with that. If you want to play him in tournaments, I'm fine with going overboard on it, but loving Ty Gibbs this weekend. Not afraid of the front row. William Byron, Ty Gibbs. Just get the strongest cars in your lineups when you can. Dale Suarez, starting in 19th. He's a good road racer. Vandal price is pretty cheap, but didn't overly impress me in practice and qualifying. Barely cracked the top 20, and if we're looking at practice, 24th at 11th, took a couple of spins as well. And I would say track house definitely was not as strong as they were in 2022 at road courses. Fell off a bit. If we're looking at last year for Dale Suarez, running position of around 14th, average finish of around 21st. Bit of a top five, but other than that, we're only talking one top 20 from Dale Suarez. So while the PD... It's appealing. I feel like I'd rather just get the more Ty Gibbs and Dylan Suarez, especially if it's tournaments. Denny Hamlin, the price is going to be very appealing to people because usually we have to pay around ten, eleven thousand dollars for Denny Hamlin. So people will probably go straight to that just because of the price discount. But road courses, he's a great qualifier, but he tends to fade back. As you can see here, our central 22nd last year, 14th in the average running position, which nothing wrong with running top 15 at this price range. The problem is he's starting inside the top 10. And he only had one top 15 to show for it last year. So he is, if you're playing Denny Hamlin at all, it's going to be tournaments, but I don't really see myself getting the much of him because why play Denny Hamlin when I can play Michael McDowell starting all the way back in 27th at $8,000. He was a better track record at road courses, at least in the next gen era. Looking at his numbers last year, had a win, two top 10s, three top fives. Some dominator points mixed in there as well. Did hit on him winning at Indy, which was a great race for me. Average running position of around 12th. And if we're looking at an 11 race sample size for him, he has been straight money. Six top 10s, two top fives, running position of around 10th. So no reason not to like Michael McDowell. Took a couple spins, but third in the five lap in practice, 26th on lap, which wasn't great. But he should be able to shuffle his way. Not saying he's going to be a front runner this weekend. Doesn't look like he's got that kind of speed. But 
he should be able to knock on the door of a top 15 at the very least, which is going to be plenty enough at $8,000. So I'd expect him to be very chalky, but looks like a cash game staple. And another guy that looks like I would imagine would be pretty popular in cash games because he's just an absolute machine at road courses. He's going to kick off in the 7K range. That's Chris Busher at $7,800. He's pretty cheap on FanDuel as well. So starting in 20th, 18th in practice, 24th in the five lap. I wouldn't say RFK was very impressive in practice. We know Brad Keselowski looked absolutely terrible, which wasn't too surprising based off of what we see in the road courses for him in the next gen era. But Chris Busher is as solid as it comes at the road courses. Last year, 7.4 average finish, 12th in the running position, four top 10s. And if we're looking at an 11 race sample size for him in the next gen era, he has nine top 10s and 10 top 15s with an average finish of 8.3. I feel like he typically qualifies a little bit better, but I think he'll figure it out during the race. So starting in 20th, another guy that you don't know, play him in cash games, I get that. Him and Michael McDowell, I feel like you just plug him in every single road course race in the next gen era and it tends to work out and they are very cheap this week. Alex Bowman, another guy that I think is very underrated at road courses. I love this group of three right here. Because yes, you have Ryan Blaney. You have Joey Logano. They're starting around the 30s. You have Chase Briscoe in 32nd. And you have big names like Denny Hamlin. And I guess not Daniel Suarez, but he has a decent track record at road courses because he did get that win. But if they go a little bit over owned, probably not Michael McDowell, but maybe Chris Buescher and Alex Bowman because they're not quite where Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano is. They don't have that name value. But they should run a lot better. And they are very cheap, I think, relative to where they can run. And as you can see for Bowman last year, average finish of 10, running position of 12, two top fives, three top 10s for Alex Bowman if you're looking in the next-gen era as a whole, 13th in the average finish, three top fives, four top 10s. So I love these guys in tournaments. So I'll be overweight there. And it really leads to some pretty balanced builds if you happen to go that route. Because if you play, I'm not saying you have to play all three of these guys in the same lineup, but... You don't have to go all the way up if you don't want to. If you want to go straight balance and avoid the scrubs, you can play these three, Ty Gibbs, Dinger in a lineup, throw in like a Kyle Busch, and you can go very balanced this week and build a really good lineup. Uh, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, I feel like they might go a bit over owned. Ryan Blaney, I, it's tough because it's hard not to like them starting this far, far back, but the ownership is the only thing I'm concerned about because these guys have legit top 10 potential. I'm not really sure we can say the same for Ryan Blaney. And Joey Legano was a little bit concerned that Joey Legano needs some points because he is deep in the pack so far to start the season because it's been a horrible, horrible start for him. Does have a couple top fives and three top tens if we're looking at the numbers last year for him at road courses. Overall, these guys took it right around mid pack. So I am not expecting sunshines and rainbows for Ryan Blaine and Joey Legano, but for where they are starting, if you want to play them in cash games, I get it. Like if you're playing cash, it makes a lot more sense to play Legano over Bowman, but in tournaments, you can certainly make the case based off of that. So Projection wise, they will look good. The only thing I'd be concerned about is the ownership. But with the addition of stages this year, it does make PD a little bit more likely to hit because we're going to get bunched back up instead of these guys just getting stuck in the back running 30s the entire time. And if you're just looking at this whole 7K range and even the top of the 6K range, there is a ton of PD. So I can't imagine that Bowman, Busher, McDowell will be high owned, but I'm hoping Busher and Bowman can be lower ownership. Same with Austin Center. If you're trying to get in different tournaments, just avoid these dark red guys. Not saying they're bad plays, but you'll probably definitely have some leverage there because you have Briscoe in 32nd, Kobe Ashi in 25th, and you have Keslowski, Jones, Gregson. These are names people know, and they will play them, even though they are super slow because there just needs to be a little bit of carnage, some shake up to where they can gain some spots. But if they can get stuck back there for the majority of the race, you'll definitely have a leg up on them if these other guys can just sneak into the top 10 or at least contend for it. Cedric's a good road racer, struggled with them a bit last year, only had one top 10 finish. For excluding Chicago, I forget where we finished there. But if you're looking at the previous year, 2022, and the first year of the next-gen car, the numbers look a bit better. He just had a horrible year last year overall. But seven top 15s, five top 10s, and 11 race sample size for him. So he's in the GPP pool, kind of in a similar range as Bowman Busher, but a little bit worse because he's starting further up. So he's kind of capped off a little bit. Briscoe is in that same pool as Logano and Ryan Blaney. Although Briscoe is a decent road racer. Didn't really show it last year with only one top 10 finish. And overall, it's not been amazing for him, but the upside is there. And Kobayashi, starting in 25th, he's not going to look as appealing as guys like Brett Keselowski. You recognize that name, you see 36 beside him, it's like, hey, why not just play Keselowski, why not play Jones, why not play Gregson? Briscoe, Joey Logano, like I prefer guys like Logano and Briscoe over Kobayashi, but if they can hold it together the entire race and not spin, I mean, we've seen Keselowski spin how many times now at road courses? So if he can keep it together, I mean, you're definitely going to have ownership leverage off a guy like Keselowski who was obviously pretty slow in practice, slow in qualifying, which is kind of the par, par for the course 
for him at this point at road courses, 30th and 25th over in Pratt. Just if you look at his numbers last year, basically just married around 20th, which honestly, if he finishes 20th at 6,900 bucks, you will take that any day. Had four top five finishes last year, excluding Chicago and 11 race sample size, nine top 20s, four top 15s. So if you're playing cash games, yes, Keslowski, I would say, is pretty safe. I'm not expecting fireworks out of him, but if he can just survive the race and with the addition of stage cautions, shuffle his way up to around 25th, 20th, that is, that is fine for cash. Eric Jones, I mean, I'm, I'm taking Keselowski over Jones. I, Jones just looks extremely slow. He was very slow at them last year. Zero top 20 finishes, drive rating of 41, which is pretty much on par with guys like Justin Haley. So I feel like if there's one of these bad guys between Keselowski, Jones, and Gregson, Jones is probably the easiest one to get away from. Bubba Wallace starting way too high for me. Did have four top 20s at the road courses last year, but we kind of need a ceiling performance for him to finish inside the top 10. Only going to move backwards, in my opinion. Gregson just seems way safer. Same with Brad Kowalski. Greg's another guy that we've seen a cheap guy in cash games. Play him starting in 39th. Practice looked decent for him. 23rd in the one lap. 7th in the five. Just couldn't get it going in qualifying. But Austin Dillon, not a ton of interest there. 25th in practice. 14th in the five. Not as many ran five laps in practice. Probably going to either hold position or move back a little bit. Carson Hosevar, not a ton of interest there. Todd Gilland. Did win me a nice chunk of money last year in this race. I faded Eric Amarola starting in the very back. Played Gillen to a fraction of the ownership. Ended up getting there at the end. I think he's kind of decent at road courses, but just at the price point, I can't imagine they get to him much because guys like Gregson and Keselowski will project much better, and I don't really think there's a reason to get the too much gilly here. John Hunter Nemechek, just really in a range. I don't have a lot of interest there. Josh Berry. Might be able to move up a little bit, but practiced 36 in the one lap and was one of the worst cars in the five lap as well. They're not super intrigued with him. Justin Haley, I like him at road courses. The problem is starting 13th in the Rick Ware car terrifies me. If he started a little bit further back, I feel like I could have more interest there, but I would say he's very likely to get shuffled out of the starting position. Corey LaJoy is going to move back. Pretty much guarantee that, I think. Breeze starting in 24th. I just don't really like any of these 5K guys, to be honest. Like, who wants to play Stenhouse? Zane Smith just looks ugly. And they pretty much are starting where they need to be. Although, Kaz Grella probably outqualified himself. I imagine he moves back. I mean, some of these guys are going to shuffle around. Timmy Hill will probably be the worst car on the track. So, really for me, 5K range sucks. If you can avoid that, I would try to. The 6K range looks pretty good, though. So, I don't really think this is a week to go stars and scrubs by any means. Like, sure, if you want to take one of these 10K guys in your build, go for it because you have to have some exposure to them they're just too good not to but if you can avoid this 5k range and go a little bit more balanced i feel like that's probably the best way to go but with that being said that's all i got for you guys this week so i hope you did enjoy it. if you did make sure you like down below subscribe to the channel if you're brand new if you want to check out all the extra content over on patreon be my guest the link down below and don't forget to comment who you think is going to score the most fantasy points and how many to win the comment contest winner will get a cash prize wish you all the best of luck see you on the live stream tomorrow i'll see you all